I've been using this Logitech trackball mouse for a few years now, and after some repairs, I think it's time to upgrade. So I went out and bought the latest trackable mouse from Logitech, which is the MX Ergo, only to find out that it still uses micro USB to charge its internal battery, even after other devices from Logitech at the time were being produced with USB-C. Which is kind of gross. Why would a $100 mouse have a micro USB when it could have had a USB-C instead? It's just kind of weird. Since this mouse can run four months without needing to be recharged, I really don't want to have to find a micro USB cable every time to charge this mouse, and I plan on keeping it for as long as I possibly can, so I'm going to go ahead and crack it open and see what I can do about adding a USB-C breakout board or something inside of it instead of dealing with micro USB. Yeah, my first thoughts upon opening this mouse is that it's very complicated. It, I feel like it's more complicated than it needs to be, and that's probably why they didn't include a USB-C, because they wasted all of their money designing this case to accommodate a very weirdly shaped PCB setup. So due to the weird shape and limited space inside this bottom half of the shell, and also the weird shape of the PCB, I don't think it's possible to insert a USB-C breakout board like I did with my keyboard uh, without being incredibly hacky. So I think the best approach is to see if I can reverse engineer this PCB and make a copy of it with a USB-C port instead of a micro USB port. After about 10 minutes, I have this circuit that I read using my multimeter, just beeping out components. The schematic in Eagle doesn't look much better than it did on my notebook. I'm not going for a beauty contest, I just want to make sure that the wiring is correct, and so far it is. Uh, a lot of the components were, well three of the components were downloaded offline, the USB-C, the connector, and the switch, so they're just uh, squares and rectangles with their pinout, nothing too fancy. The SOT23 packages are something I whipped up to represent the pinout as seen on the board, because I don't know the component to get the schematic for it yet. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and simple, um, and a bit overkill. I don't think we need a ferrite bead grounding the, uh, grounding the chassis of the USB connector, but I included it anyways. Also don't think we need these inductors on the power rail, but whatever, threw those in as well. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was an exact copy, just with a USB port and the two resistors needed to allow it to charge. This is a very weirdly shaped PCB as it has to fit a very weirdly shaped mouse case. Uh, so to get a proper clone of the board, I went ahead and uploaded a scan of the PCB in Diffusion 360. I calibrated it to make sure that the dimensions were correct from this point to this point, and that gave me um, a really good measurement for the overall PCB. I then went ahead and sketched the outline of the PCB as well as the circles and cutouts. I made everything a little bit bigger than it had to be because I felt like if it was a little bit bigger that would be better than being a little bit too small. Um, so I could probably dial it in a bit more if I wanted to, but I think it'll work out just fine. Uh, I even went ahead and exported a uh, still file from this, or STL file, which I then 3D printed to make sure that it fit before I sent out the boards to fabrication, and it did. I don't have any images or videos of that, but that was a useful step to take. Um, so after the whole thing was sketched out, I exported it as a DXF file, which I then uploaded into Eagle uh, Board Creator to get my board outline that I would send out to PCBWay for a fabrication, and this is what it looks like. I exported the files from Eagle and sent them over to PCBWay, and a week later I got this box from PCBWay with my PCBs. I mean, just check out that quality and that awesome color I chose. Speaking of PCBWay, they are the sponsor of my channel, and I cannot thank them enough for their support. They offer a variety of services, ranging from standard PCBs, rigid flex PCBs, 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal, and vacuum molding, and the list goes on. Uh, they even offer PCB assembly, so if you don't want to solder something, you send them a file with a request to build it themselves with a bomb that you supply, and they will solder it for you and deliver you an awesome quality PCB. Same goes for 3D printing. If you find something online that you want 3D printed, send them the file, and they will send you a 3D printed object. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. Let's get back to the video. I'm going to prep the new PCB by tinning all of its pads, so that way we can just transfer all the components using hot air from the original PCB to the new and improved USB-C PCB. To do this, I'm going to use hot air on low airflow, since we're dealing with smaller components, and a lot of flux to make sure that nothing flies away. 
I'm just going to heat up the components, pick them off, and transfer it over to its corresponding spot on the new board. Be sure to follow my Instagram to get updates on this project because I feel like I want to release a full bomb for this. So that way, if you want, you can just order this PCB from PCBWay fully assembled so that way you don't have to transfer anything over yourself. But for now, a transplant PCB is the best I can do. And now it's time to solder on the USB-C port and replacement switch. Check the description in this video for part numbers for the switch, USB-C port, resistors, and replacement connector if you plan on making this yourself. After messing with the charging input, I wanted to make sure that the battery can still fully recharge just to make sure nothing weird went on with my board. So I went ahead and depleted it using a 3mm LED as a load. Took about a day to do, which is fine. And then I plugged it back into the mouse. We're getting 3.7, which means that the battery is recognized and starting to charge. After a few hours, we have it up to 4.1, which is close enough to 4.2, meaning that the battery is fully recharged. And I'm going to go ahead and test it to make sure that the mouse turns on, and it does. And here's a little bit of bonus content. Turns out this mouse was used. I didn't realize it when I bought it, but looking back at the listing, it is clearly advertised as used. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the switches on this to encourage a longer lifespan. To do that, I'm going to use my iron to heat up all the joints, drop that switch, wick up all the solder using solder wick and a fat chisel tip, clean the top side of the PCB to remove any flux that kind of um, soaked up from the top, and replace them with these awesome switches that I cannot pronounce. Starts with a K and solder them back into place. I feel like I'm talking a lot. After that, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all the flux, and we have a new switch with a longer lifespan, and you can't even tell it was replaced. All that's left to do now is to modify the case itself to allow for the fitting of the USB-C port. To do that, I'm going to be using a Dremel. I have to remove material from the micro USB connector hole and a few pieces of plastic on the inside around the switch to allow for the uh, fatter footprint of the USB-C. Also, I have to remove a few pieces on the switch itself to avoid interfering with the USB-C port. After that's all said and done, the PCB fits perfectly and now we can fully reassemble this mouse. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. Be sure to check the links in the description of this video to find files for this PCB as well as the parts that I did round up for it if you want to attempt this mod yourself. It's not easy but it's definitely doable and uh, at the end of the day we finally have a Logitech trackball mouse that uses a USB-C port instead of micro USB to charge its internal battery.